Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. This is going to be the top 10 list for September 8th. Uh, sorry, September 9th, <laughs> uh, 2021. For the Golden Age, the top hottest Golden Age comics on the market. Nobody else is talking about these books. And this is the channel you want to stay in tune to, to see the top hottest Golden Age comics. There's nobody else doing this. I don't know why nobody else talks about Golden Age comics like I do. I love Golden Age comics. And this is the video. If you're interested in what are the hottest books for the Golden Age right now, well, these are the ones that made the list. This is based on Go Collect's hottest top 10 for the Golden Age. So I'm going to get into the numbers and show you how cool these books are. <laughs> like, let's see. Uh, and the first one that's on the list is this one. Major Victory Comics number one. This is a great comic. It's an action comic. You got a bit of the, the Nazi element to it. And whenever you have those elements, you can expect, you know, collectors to really go after this kind of comic. Uh, this book has really jumped up onto the list and it jumped up 989 spots and probably I think the reason for the fact that this one has jumped up recently is due to the fact that there was a promise collection sale within the last few months uh, and we can see that with when we look at the census now this book is fairly rare it, there's only 33 on the census typically for a golden age book you're looking at around 100 to 200 copies is considered like a fairly common book uh, so when it's below that 100 mark, it's a fairly, fairly rare book and it doesn't come up much. Um, there was two sales that really drove this book onto this list. That's another thing that you'll notice with the Golden Age comics. Whenever there's a lot of sales, that will make a book jump up onto the top 10 list. Just because there's normally not that many sales for these Golden Age books. And we had two sales within the last month. And we had one in August for 6.5 and one for 4.0. So we're gonna take a look at those specific sales. Now, this book is not one which has a lot of high grade copies. The highest graded comic for this book is a 9.2. So if we ever see a 9.8, well, you can imagine it would go for very high premium. Now, this is not an expensive book. It's not one that really is sought after by collectors compared to some of the other ones that will be on this list, but it's still a fairly cool book. Now, the highest graded comic was from the Mile High collection. So we see this Mile High Edgar Church uh, pedigree, and it was sold back in uh, 2018 for $3,944. So you can imagine if that book comes back on the market, you're, you can expect that number to be around, I would say seven or $8,000 based on, <laughs> based on the current activity within the, within the comic market. Now we, we see that the six, five had a sale in August of $840. So that is up almost uh, 50% uh, from its previous sale at $566. Pretty good jump in value. Um, and then we look at the 4.0, and th that's what's really interesting about these Golden Age comics. Now, I'm not sure when exactly this sold. Let's just take a look at, this, at the census. This sold on... Um, August 31st and this other one sold I'm just curious when they sold also on August 31st so very interesting that they sold at the same time or this one sold July sorry July 31st and the other one sold so barely maybe August 1st and this one sold one sec I can't understand that that's interesting. So they're both showing July. I don't know why they're showing both July 1st, the 31st. I don't know. That's very interesting. Um, so yeah, so they're both saying Aug the uh, one sec here. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was trying to get the actual date. I was like, why is it showing August, uh, July thirty uh, first? It's not actually August. It's August sixth. Okay, and when when did this one sell? Let's take a look. Sorry to confuse people there. <laughs> okay, so this one sold on the second. So what happened was um, this one had sold on August second. And it probably brought some interest into the market for this book. And then another one came up later. And there's, you know, sort of that, that's something that's interesting about the, the golden age. You have uh, these books rarely coming up on the market, rarely coming up. And what ends up happening is one comes up and it sells for whatever price it sells for. And that drives the market. So even though a lower grade comes up, it can actually sell for more because all of a sudden there's this interest that has been created from one of these obscure books. And that's what we see. Uh, the, the eight, oh, the, the, sorry, the six, five or six, yeah, the six, five sold for 840, but the four, oh, which is a much lower grade sold for $999, a 300 almost 400% increase in value. So 350% increase in value. So huge increase in value because of that interest that was created in this book. Just really interesting to see that phenomena. So um, this is, you know, uh, this is how the golden age works. You know, the very obscure books, uh, one will sell, people will be interested in picking up a copy. They feel like they missed out and they'll really maybe overbid or overpay for even a lower grade when the next book comes up. So um, to see that in a one week period where it's, it's, it's really <laughs> gone up that much is very interesting. So this is um, Major Victory Comic number one from 1944 from Centaur Publishing. And we have the number nine on the list is uh, Superman number 18. Now this is an early Superman comic. It's a World War II cover. It's got a lot of key elements that collectors will love. They love this kind of war savings bonds and stamps. They love this, you know, do the job on the Jap Nazis, <laughs> Jap Nazis, you know, that kind of uh, humor and anti-Japanese, anti-German uh, sentiment is really interesting. So. People will seek these kind of covers, especially when it's a kind of a popular character that has all of those elements. So this is um, their character in the title, very popular book. Now let's take a look at the numbers. So Superman 18, um, there are no 9.8s on the census, but they estimate a fair market value of a 9.8 to be $110,000. And 9.6 sold for uh, $60,000. So you know, it's a pretty pretty expensive book. Now there was a recent sale in February uh, for 7.0 at $3,600. And uh, the most recent sale was for uh, a 4.0 for $1,300. So this one has, you know, a bunch of recent sales that have kind of driven it up on the market. And um, I believe that, again, this might be a one that was also in the auction related to the, the, the Promise Collection, which is kind of driving a lot of these books to kind of pop up in value. Because again, whenever a, a collection, like a major pedigree collection comes up on the market, people start getting interested in these books and they, they get very curious about uh, the values and uh, uh, how these books, you know, maybe picking up a copy. Um, so we see a 0.5 sold in July for $290. So you can expect, if you really want to get on, in on this book, you can expect to get a low grade copy for three to four four hundred dollars and you can get like into that one five to maybe a four if you're well, not, not a four but maybe a three i should say so between three and four hundred dollars um you can actually expect that these prices that that 
2.5 at 3.01 will actually go up and be more in line with the more recent sales of the 3.5. So you can expect that, that these prices to go up. Um, so there's 171 on the census. Again, as I said, anything above 100 is a fairly common book for the Golden Age. When these books were printed, they were probably, you know, within the million, a million range of comics published. Um, not to say that there were millions of them, but there, there were a lot of these being printed at the time, and not many survived. Even still, even though with, uh, with those high numbers, just not many survived. So, but at the same time, anything above that 100 mark on the census is actually makes it fairly common. <laughs> um, and this one actually, you can see that within the sales history, there's 50 plus sales in the sales history. So uh, a more common book. Um, there's nothing on eBay. <laughs> I'm just looking to see any eBay listings. Uh, you know, it's kind of interesting not to see any, um, but it is a rarer book still. I mean, compared, you know, compared to modern books where there's just like so many of them, uh, you know, this is rare, but it's just not to the golden age standard of rareness. Um, so that's number nine on our list, which is Superman number 18. The next is another Superman Batman related one. This is World's Finest Comics number five. And this is an interesting one uh, because it's, you know, it's got a lot of um, characters in it. It's got uh, Rob, ba Superman, Batman, Robin, Sandman, uh, Zatara, and it's another one of these patriotic uh, comics. Now, it, these are World War II planes, but it doesn't have that kind of that appeal that the other one had. Um, and also it's a 15 center, which is kind of interesting uh, because that means that it's, you know, it was probably a pretty pricey book at the time. Now this is another book which is interesting because it's interest, uh, intro to TNT and it's intro to Dan the, the Dynamite. And it's the last Crimson Adventure in title. So it's kind of an interesting book for all of those reasons. Um, now this is not as expensive as Superman series. Like Superman is, he has a premium associated to the, the title Superman, but uh, World's Finest Comics just don't have that as much of a demand for them. But uh, still, with that being said, uh, they they figure a nine, they estimate a nine eight value to be around seventeen thousand. There are no nine eights. There are no nine sixes for this book. There's the highest graded one on the census is a 9.4, which had a sale of $8,000 in 2013. So you can imagine if this book <laughs> comes up on the market again, in that high grade, it would definitely command a really high premium. Now, the one that sold recently was for a 7.5 and it sold at for $2,000. So, um, and we look at the census and there's 80 of this one on the census. So it's a much more rare book than the, the Superman one, for example. Um, but it's had some recent sales. So it had a sale for um, a 7.5 and uh, a 3.5. So those sales history really drove it to be one of the ones that has jumped up on this list. And it jumped up actually, um, it jumped up 140 spots to get into this top 10 list. The next one is number eight on, or seven on our list, is uh, Batman number seven. Now this is a really great book. It's got that action going on with Batman punching the guys, heads like thrown back, and then you got Robin tackling him. It's just a great action cover. And it is um, also a book where Batman meets Commissioner Gordon face to face for the first time. And this is the one where ba uh, Commissioner Gordon appoints Batman to be an honorary member of the Gotham Police Department. So this is really where Batman starts working with the police department. And he's not just some vigilante anymore. He is now like a full 
honorary member of that police force. And I think they did that mainly because they want to avoid that vigilante kind of element to Batman. And they really wanted to make him more mainstream in terms of the way he was behaving. So um, this is a really sought after book because it is our early Batman. You can see if there was a 9.8, they estimate the value of being 130,000. Um, there is no 9.4 even. The highest graded comic, and there's two of them, is for 9.2. And they had recent sales for 34,000 back in November of 2020. Now, if we look, the most recent sale for this book was in August of 2021 for four five and it was sold for nineteen hundred dollars but you can probably get in on this book for around that thousand dollar mark for uh like a one eight or two oh range you, you can maybe get in on this book it's one of those ones where you can expect it to be a little bit more expensive uh there has been a lot of sales activity for this book recently uh, within that 4.5 to 2.5 range, you'll notice that there was sales in June and August and July um, where there's just a bunch of things that are happening. And you can see that the prices have really kind of climbed with each sale. Um, this book is more common than, than any of the books that we've talked about so far. far. Uh, there's 241 of these on the census. So it's a fairly common book, but there's a lot of demand for early Batman, golden age Batman. So you can expect that the demand sort of balances out that the supply on this, where it, it's just one of those books that's gonna command a premium. Um, so this is one you can look for. I've seen it on auction a bunch of times actually. So it's one that it's out there and you can wait for it a little bit. Um, but it is one that has jumped up on the, on the census because of the recent sales history where it's jumped 993 spots to get into our top 10 list. Now, number six on our list is All-Star Comics number six, which is kind of fitting. And this is a really great uh, book. Um, a lot of these All-Star Comics are really becoming hot right now. Just, just as a, for your information kind of thing, these are really hot books and the reason all-star comics is really hot right now is um the black adam movie is coming out and what's happening is people are looking for uh books that are associated to black adam now when they did the promo for black adam they talked about the jsa and the jsa is the justice society of america and and it was introduced in All-Star Comics number three. And what, what happened was um, uh, that book, that book is super hot. That's a really mega key. <laughs> um, but anything that's associated with that, like number four, number five, number six, <laughs> uh, number eight is a big one because it's first Wonder Woman. All those books are really, really hot right now. And even all the way up, like I've seen even later ones, like in the 50s, uh, 40s, 50s numbers, uh, really jumping in value because people are trying to get those early girl, golden age books related to the Justice League or Justice Society of America, which is the sort of the retro version of the Justice League. Now, the JS, JSA, its members were, you got the Flash, you got um, the Spectre, you got Our Man, you got Sandman, Adam Smasher, Dr. Fate, Hawkman, and uh, uh, Green, uh, Green Lantern. Now this book introduced uh, Johnny Thunder to the, to the list of uh, members of the JSA. So we look at this book and we see the, there's no high, high grade for this one. The highest grade is a 696. And they, they figure a 9.8 would go for around 46,000. But there's been a bunch of recent sales for this book. And this book has really jumped up onto this list. It has jumped up 112 spots. Uh, and we see it, uh, you know, we see it, do, 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 um, 
recent sales in uh, August for a 9.2 at 3,000. And another one for a 4.0 in August as well for $625. Now, I actually, I was offered this book. I actually saw this book in real life, in person. <laughs> Somebody wanted to sell it for about $1,000. And I turned them down because it was a it was like a 3.0, 4.0 range, it was, and I thought that was a bit much, you know. So you'll see that on the secondary market where people <laughs> will try to sell things a little bit higher, and that's why it's really good to know these numbers because you can find out what the past sales history has been really saying for these books. Um, but it is a cool book. I mean, it is you know it's an early uh, Justice Society of America book. And there's only, there's 111 of these on the census. So not super rare, but it is a rare book. And you can probably buy this book for four to $500 and you'll get a reasonable copy. So um, it's one to definitely look out for. Um, I've seen this book fairly frequently on the, on the auction sites. So it's one that you can kind of, if you're, if you're really interested in it, just, wait for that good price because it's one that you can probably get in on, on as I said, four to $500. Okay, so the next one on our list, number five on our list is Superman number eight. And now this is a really great action comic. Um, you got Superman swooping in to save a guy that's on fire. You got the guy with a Tommy gun, just lots of action happening. And again, these Superman titles are hot. You know, they, everyone's always liked Superman, just a very popular character, especially from the Golden Age. And this one has moved up um, also about 100 spots on, on the top 10 to get, make it into the top 10 list. It moved up 112 spots. Um, and we see it... Um, there are no high, high grades. There's the highest grade is a 2-0, a 9-2, I should say, 9-2, 9-2. And um, they sort of estimate a 9-8 would have sold for $74,000, uh, $74, but there are none that are that high. Now there supposedly is a 9-4 on the census. I see that here, uh, but the reason there, it was never, never made the auction record, so we don't know how much <laughs> people bought or sold that one for. Um, a 9.2 has sold back in May of 2018 for 20,000. Now this book had multiple sales recently um, in June and May and July and August, okay? And what we see is these, there's it's been fairly hot um, where the prices are climbing you're getting a, a good increase in um in value for this one um we can see that when we do the analyzer i'll show you the the increase so you can see that it's really gone up like 80 like a 87 percent for a 60 74 percent for the for the two five so this book has really climbed um recently. Now the 4.0 went a little bit down, but generally you'll see that the prices have jumped up significantly for this book. And to see that kind of huge increase for a golden age book means that it's got some heat behind it because that's really rare. Usually golden age books are kind of like slow and steady. They're not like ones that show that massive increase in price. Um, so the next book on our list is Wiz Comics number three from April of 1940. Now this is an interesting one because this is prior to the United States getting into that Second World War, um, but it has that World War II kind of feel to it. They didn't put the Nazi flag in the background or anything like that, but you can see that uh, Captain, uh, Captain Marvel is like, you know, kind of ripping apart this plane and it looks like potentially some maybe Nazi-like level to it, but you know, they don't actually say that. But this book, what it has going for it, besides the, that kind of World War II feel, 
is the fact that it is an early uh, Captain Marvel appearance. And that really drives the market, uh, that early appearance of such a iconic character. Now, this one, the other thing with the early Wiz comics, there are just not many that have survived. Uh, this doesn't have a huge sales volume, so there is no um, you know, fair market values that have been developed for this book. Now, it had some sales recently for 5.5 and a 3.0 in August, and that's what's really driven it to pop up on this list, and that's why it's number four on this list. Uh, it, it moved up 995 spots to make it on the list, but it's such a rare comic. You just don't see it very often on the, on, um, available. It's, there's only 35 on the census. It's just a really rare comic. And let's look at the GPA. Let's look at those two sales, the 5.5 five and the 3.0. We see that, so this book is from 1940. It's Wiz Comics number three from Fawcett Publications. And you can see back in uh, 2005, uh, there was a sale for a 9 for 160 bucks. Can you imagine? That's such a, it was such a great deal. That book, probably if it was uh, available now, would be like 15, 20,000. It would be a lot more expensive just because uh, books have really climbed in value since then. So whoever bought it for 160 bucks did extremely well. Uh, then we see uh, 8.5 sold in uh, 2012 for $4,332. So that's another one that you would expect that if it came up on auction again would be commanding probably around 8,000. Maybe more because it, look, you can see the 7.0 sold for 11,000 in 2017. So it really, you know, there's been a lot of increase in value. Now, the two that we, 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 we see that sold recently, we have the 5.5, five, and it sold for $1,800. And let's see if we can see any past. There's no, you know, they sort of say that it, it's gone up from earlier price, um, you know, from it's doubled in price, basically, or almost tripled in price. Um, over the last 15 years. So it's really gone up, um, like a 300% increase in value. So you'd expect it to be on this top list because of that reason. Uh, another one is the 3.0. And let's see, it's sales history. Now, it had a bit of a drop. There was a, a, a sale that was really inexpensive back in 2020. Uh, in which is kind of interesting. And then, but it, it recently bent, jumped back up. So it has gone up um, 150%. <laughs> so that's a pretty good, pretty good jump in price. And now it's selling for, 3.0 selling for $1,225. So it's, it's gone up quite nicely. Um, so you can probably get this book I'm gonna guess that thousand dollar range for a two O. Like it doesn't show what the two O has sold for recently because there just hasn't been any recent sales. But I would guess that a two O would be around a thousand dollars. So if you're looking for that low grade entry level book, you're probably gonna pay anywhere from five hundred for a really low grade to two for to fifteen hundred probably to get a reasonable looking one. So <laughs> it's gone up a lot. Okay, so that's number four on our list. Number five on, uh, number three on our list is this one, Magic Comics number one. This is a very interesting book. This is um, from 1939, and it's just a really old comic. Um, it's starring Magic the Magician. Now this is Henry on the cover, it's Henry Covers Begin on this issue, and it's Mandrake the Magician, Henry, Popeye, Blondie, uh, Barney Baxter, Secret Agent X9, and Bucky all make appearances in this book. That was really common back then where they would have like sort of an anthology all the time. Like every time <laughs> comics came out, they would have multiple things within the comic. It wouldn't be just devoted to one character. It'd be often 
multiple characters shared the same book. Um, this one is a, kind of an interesting book to have jumped up onto the list because it's moved up 996 spots to be on this list. And it's probably just because of some recent sale. Now there was two recent sales for this book, um, both in August, uh, one for a, a four five and one for two five. Now this is a really rare book. There's only 20 of these on the census and the highest graded one is a nine four. So there's just not that many of these books and not many of them are in those high, high grades. So there's only one of nine four and there's no nine two. So there's three nine threes. So there's really not many of these, not many in high grade. Um, just a really rare book. Uh, and it was just the fact that there was those two recent sales that really drove this book to be up on the mark, on the top 10 list. So let's take a look at those sales. So um, again, this one had a 9.0 that sold back in 2010 for 5,000. And then you see it's mile high ones on the list. So there's some pedigree ones. Now pedigrees will always demand a little bit more money. So you'll see that those have pretty high value. Um, but let's take a look at those recent sales ones. So we got one from August of 2021. And does it show the little, I was trying to get my little graphy thing. Okay, so there's no real comparison that they could make it uh, make for it. So it is up though. I can tell that it's up from, if you compare the 4.5 to the 4.0, now the 4.0 had a sale. Again, with these golden age books, you really don't have much sales volume to compare. So what you have to do is like take the closest grade to it and, and use that as an estimate of where the price has really gone. So we look at the 4.0 compare to the 4.5. Now the 4.0 had a sale back in November of 2014 for $374. Now the 4.5, which you would expect to be around 500 based on that price, has sold for $750. So almost double what you would expect it to be selling for. So <laughs> it has really gone up in value. Um, now we take a look at that second sale. Uh, again, there's just not much to compare it with. Um, the only other sale was for, um, a 1.5 in February of 2021, and it was actually more expensive. Um, so it was probably somebody paid a little extra, <laughs> extra just to get this book. And that's what happens with the golden age. People who, it's a bit of a seller's market because you know it's a rare book, there's only 20 of the census, and sometimes people overpay just because there's not much really that they can go by to determine what's a fair price for the book. And you can get sometimes that extra people paying, you know, or two bidders going after it, and they'll pay a little bit of a premium. So um, this book, you can expect to get a low grade copy for about $300. I'm not sure if I'd be super interested in this. There's not really much for me going into this book, but it's just cool that it is on the census. It is one that is number three on our list. And it's just a cool uh, book from 1939. Um, now, number two on the list is one that I really like. Um, I don't have this book, but I would love to have this book. This is Weird Science number six. And it's Al Felstein cover. I, I'm a big fan of Al Felstein. Um, I think actually, no, I, I normally, sometimes I have like a bunch of Al Felsteins behind me. I really love the artist. He just does really great uh, art and this is an EC comic. Now this is actually the second from this series uh, where they changed the title to Weird Science. Uh, you know it started with number five and sometimes they do that where they just keep the, num the, the, the numbering system from a previous title and that's what happened with this one. So this is Weird Science number six and this one is interesting too because it's um, really rare uh, in terms of uh, the sales history. There's not much sales history, 32 sales, um, and there's only 50 of them on the census. Uh, do they have any on eBay? None on eBay. <laughs> so um, 
you know, it's just a really rare comic. Now, the funny thing is, it had three sales recently. So those three sales drove it to be on this top 10 list. And it jumped 997 spots to be on this list. And it's only because of three recent sales. So um, we're gonna take a look at those three sales. And we see, as I said, 50 on the census. The highest grade is a 9.8. So there are high grades of this one, but I'll show you why there's high grades of this. You'll, you'll, you'll understand why there is so many high grades. Um, the reason is uh, these were file copies. Now, the publisher will keep sometimes a copy of the comic and they'll keep maybe even multiple comics of like uh, multiple of these comics. So these are from the William Gaines uh, file copy, which is the publisher. EC Comics was the publisher, was owned by William Gaines. And um, so you'll notice that the top graded ones are all from his collection. So uh, yeah, so let's look at those recent sales. So we look at the first one, which was for the 6.5, and it sold in August for $381. And it had a prior sale of um, around 291. So it has gone up uh, about a, about 50% in that time period since its prior sale. And we take a look at the other two. We see the 5.0. Now the 5.0, uh, had sort of an interesting trajectory. It, you know, it, it sold back in 2004 for $92. So it's up uh, 100 and almost, almost 200% from its prior record. Math, <laughs> you know, uh, it's rough. Yeah, roughly almost three times, two and a half times more. Okay, so 250%. Um, and then we got, but there was a spike where it actually sold prior, uh, we got the sale right here, uh, for 330. So it actually sold higher in the past and then it kind of dropped. Again, with these golden age ones, people sometimes will overpay just because they want the book and there's not that many opportunities to get it. So, uh, they'll overpay. Um, but the most recent sale was in August for $255. And again, that is a, a big increase of value within the last 15 years of almost 250%. So <laughs> still pretty good. Um, now the next big, next one that was sold was uh, the 3.0. And this had a 204% increase in value. So the most the prior sale was back in um, July of uh, 2020, and now it's sold for 240 just recently. So it, it is really jumped up in value, uh, and it's it's another book that got swept up in this you know comic hype that's going on for the last year. Um, a lot of these like golden age horror or sci-fi or EC books have really seen a massive increase in value. And you'll see that. And as I said, people will buy these lower grades because it's it's entry but level books and people are, you know, they'll be desperate to get into those books. So you can see like, you know, there's been a bunch of sales that have happened uh, for these books. Okay, so that's number two on our list. What is number one? <laughs> number one, drum roll. Uh, is this one crime suspense stories number 20 is the number one hottest book from the golden age and this is a great book this is the one of the most sought after books from the soti collection which is, which is the seduction of the innocent collection people love this book because it is pretty graphic it's a hanging cover people there's a premiere like you know when people uh when they look for cool golden age comics, one of the things that they look for are bondage comics or hanging covers. It's just a, it's, it's a thing that 
there's certain collectors that really love these hanging covers because it is so gruesome. And this one is probably the most famous hanging man cover of all. You know, it's got the broken neck, his tongue is sticking out, his eyes are rolling back into his head. It is just a great cover. It's a Johnny Craig cover, just one that a lot of collectors will seek out. And this is from EC Comics, another highly sought after publisher. And it's, you know, it was one that was mentioned in The Seduction of the Innocent. So, so many things going for it. So if we take a look at the sales history, we can see that there's no 9.8 on the census, uh, but they estimate a 9.8 would be worth $105,000. So really valuable book. Um, there are two 9.6s on the census, and uh, probably, again, those might be from the Gaines Publishing. You know, So you'll see that there will be a few high-grade ones. Um, and there was a bunch of recent sales for this one. I actually see this book fairly frequently on the market. Um, there's 201 of these books on the census, which is, as I said, that's fairly common, uh, considered fairly common as a golden age book. Um, it's just that there's so much demand for this book, you will see that the price will just constantly go up. And I actually thought I remember seeing a sale from either Comic Connect or Comic Link where it actually sold for more than what some of these prices say. So you can expect that these prices, these fair market prices are a little bit low, in my opinion. So we see that there was a sale in August for 7 dollars for, two point, uh, for two, uh, $2,400. And there was another sale for 5 5 for $1,400. And the other sale, there was three sales in August for a 3.0 at 875. Now I got, I'm gonna show you my copy. I'm gonna grab it. So I'm gonna just change the screen here, show you my copy. My copy is a 3.0 and I paid 800 for my copy. So uh, mine has gone up a little bit, <laughs> you know, it's gone up a little bit. I'm gonna actually show you, uh, you know, I just love this cover by the way, just great, great comic. So happy to have this in my collection. It's the only one out of this top 10 that I actually had. So I'd love to hear how many of these top 10 do you have in your collection? Uh, I'm, I'm just happy to have one. Um, so let's go back to the census. And I'm gonna show you how much um, this, this comic has really gone up in price. It's just one that is really sought after. So you'll notice um, a 9.0 has gone up 90 per, almost 90 percent 89.1 percent the 90 has dropped a little bit 94 has dropped it gone up a little bit 70 which is based on that recent sale has gone up 205 percent that's massive for a golden age book that's huge um and then that other one which was the 30 went up 96 percent just a huge increase in price so this is a really sought after book. And if you look at the eBay prices, so we know that the 70, like if we go back, if we go back, we can see the 70, they say it sold for um, 2,400. Now, if you look at the eBay prices right here, you know, basically double, <laughs> you know, double what the fair market value for this book is. You know, as I said, those prices that I see for the fair market values I, I would love to get it for that price because it just, you don't see it. And I, I've seen so many auctions where the price is much higher than what these fair market values are saying. So even like the 2025, I mean, it's selling for, a, you know, they're trying to sell it for around $1,000. So it is just a really highly sought after book. Um, you know, you just, you just don't get it for the prices that are, that are here. Um, but yeah, this has been the top 10 list of the hottest Golden Age comics. I hope you enjoyed this top 10 list. Um, if you could give me your feedback, what do you enjoy these top 10 lists? I'll do more of them if you enjoy it. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe on my videos for my videos. 
And uh, stay tuned. I'm going to try to do more of these. I'm also going to be doing a top 10 Silver Age comic list, which I'll air tomorrow. So you can see what are the top Silver Age comics that are making the making or trending right now. So um, I hope again you enjoyed this list. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.